Jamie Edwards. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> well, I'm happy to have you here and I'm really excited for this conversation. I've been looking forward to it since you booked in and here um, we are. <laughs> yeah, and here we are. Yay. So um, for those of you who don't really know who you are or people who already know who you are and want to hear your story and a little bit about you, let's start from there and then we're going to get into how to be a generous leader. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, well, currently I'm a podcaster and I've, I've done radio off and on for 30 years. And so that's been a first love of mine and I've had a journey over the years and it took me until just recently to figure out like how my puzzle pieces fit together. And sometimes we do all these different things and you go, I don't see the thread. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what my common purpose is within all those. And so anyway, it just all started to fit together for me in the last couple of years, but really the road got more directional in my late thirties when I was invited to join some friends I knew and start playing instruments. And we formed a band and we just started proceeding. And as I did that, it pushed me out of my comfort zone. I was playing guitar. And as we proceeded, I started singing in the band and I found myself around 40 years old singing on stage and just pushed out of, um, my regular life in ways that I didn't anticipate. I had two small children and yet, you know, I was learning so much about myself because I had to overcome fear to even do that. I had not sung on stage before. I, we weren't great. I mean, <laughs> you know, we were just like women banging it out, you know, and, um, but people would turn up to see us and stuff. So it was kind of a novelty thing too, but as that proceeded, I was like, I'm getting so much out of this and we have something to say. And unfortunately that band fell apart, but when it did, I, we were three years in with it. And I was like, okay, I still have something to say. And I've been doing this for three years and I enjoy it. it I, enjoy maybe isn't the right word. It pushed me in a way that I knew was good for my growth. And mm -hmm. so, and the Austin music community, I'm in Austin, was so welcoming and cool. Everybody here's just really cool. If you take up music, no matter when, they don't care. They're like, come on. And <laughs> so, yeah, which is really awesome. And so I just decided to write some music and record it. And then I wrote more and just kept pushing myself. And that was really good for me. And as time has progressed between radio, that podcasting, and, and I've loved fashion too. I used to own a clothing store here. I realized that the common thread with all this was my voice and expressing myself without fear. And so that is what my podcast is about now. It is about overcoming fear at any age to do whatever it is that you want to do. And I want to help people using my voice. I want to help people find their voice. And I've also, yeah, I've got two daughters. They're 16 and 12 now. So that's interesting. <laughs> and, um, and then I'm also the author of two books. I wrote a novel called The Trouble with Becoming a Witch that took me like 12 years. So, you know, Ooh, I was love a long that project. title. <laughs> Thank you. And um, it's semi-autobiographical about a woman that's trying to find her own voice, you know, in the face of society or your marriage or your family that's telling you to be one way. And then I've also written, uh, co-written with my uh, second husband. We co-wrote a children's book called Starla and the boogie deluxe that is about a little girl that wants to be a singer and there's a song that you can download with that that i wrote and co-wrote with my producer aj vallejo and my daughter uh sang that song actually she's Aww. a really good singer so yeah so i've had a lot of irons in the fire but now um my purpose is to use my voice to help others lift theirs up. And I just believe that we all have a unique voice to share. And some people like to say there's too many podcasts. And I'm like, no, there's not because you have a unique voice. I have a unique voice. Everyone listening to this has a unique voice and we all have something really special to share. And, and that's what it's about. It's about this conversation. And so I think podcasts are really important. So, um, so I'm always like happy to, participate as a guest as well. So, um, thanks for having me. And I guess that's about me. I guess that's it about me. There, I, I probably forgot some stuff, but that's basically it. Well, I appreciate that. And also what you're saying about, you know, there's never too many podcasts, like 
It's so true. I think people often, and I think at the beginning of my journey as well, I was like, oh, who am I? And, you know, who's going to listen to me? And I think it's not so much about that. It's pushing past that fear, like you said, because you never know. It's the way that you have a way of telling a story or presenting things or even asking questions that might relate to somebody in, you know, a really strong way versus, you know, how can I try to be like something that's already being done? It's kind of like being fearless about being true to you and who you are. So I like your vibe. I like what you're about. <laughs> well, I totally agree with that. And I don't want people to listen to this and think that I'm all confidence in my voice. Cause, um, you know, like you said, you know, you're like, who am I? And I still have moments where I struggle with that. And so that's normal. I just want to tell people that's normal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can find that confidence. It just takes practice. Absolutely. And actually I was kind of talking about this with my partner the other day and I'm like, I don't think that self doubt and that inner voice ever goes away. You just get almost like better at negotiating with it where you're like, okay, I hear you. You're making a valid point, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to go for it. And if I fall flat on my face, I do, but I got, there's only one way to figure it to find out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's just the older we get, the more, the less inclined we want to fall on our face or so many times we can be scared because we're like, oh, I'm failing, you know, whatever. When, when we're younger, it's like, who cares? But, um, you know, you just have to let go of that fear of failure and go, I don't fail. Mm -hmm. I either uh, do it or I learn. So that's yeah. a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, I feel kind of like failure, the whole concept of it is a bit of an illusion. Like there's, I think opportunity to grow and learn, okay, this work that didn't work, or maybe I need to change my approach, or maybe I need to, you know, get a little bit more aligned with my heart and be less, you know, technical about how I'm approaching something, whatever it is that works for you. It's like, yeah, I think that failure is just sort of a concept to keep people stuck in this like little, like in the hamster wheel, like don't try anything new because we already have enough, you know, out there and you just, you need to be like a part in the wheel. And it's like, no, we need you to help, you know, um, be an authentic expression of what's inside of you. And I actually think, you know, finding what like your true inner song is and then like putting that out into the world. Yeah, we're talking for about sure, music. For sure. Yeah. By the um, way, you don't mm -hmm. look like you don't look like you could even be 40. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, pro I probably have like touch up just a little on my zoom, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> I'm like, I want to know what you eat. I want to know your sleep schedule. Like how do I, how do I, how do I get to be your age? And look, listen to awesome. my podcast. I share it all. I promise. Oh, I'm okay. an open book. Absolutely. <laughs> fucking. Can I cuss on it? Oh yeah. Abso absolutely. Like, yeah. So I, I share, I share it all. So thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here for reverse aging. Like let's, <laughs> let's figure that out. <laughs> oh, I know. Right. I, do you ever, this is kind of a side tangent, but do you ever do face yoga or like, um, lymphatic uh, drainage massages on your well, face? Um, I've done, um, uh, why am I spacing on the, the tool that you do? Oh, um, gua sha. Gua sha. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I've done that and I had a tool, but it just broke, but, um, but yeah, I've done that, but I haven't done like the face yoga thing and stuff. That's been, there's been different trend versions of that over the mm -hmm. years. Like I remember a friend of mine, like 20 years ago, and she was like, you do these extras and we're like, you make like a lion face. You're like, I don't know. It's crazy. And, um, she was doing it and her mother was doing it. And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't have it in me. It's, it's pretty <laughs> nuts. It, and actually it takes a lot of commitment because you have to do it like consistently every day. Um, but it's actually great if you want to make babies laugh. Yeah, they sure. Love it. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? It's cultivating habits. Like, and I do have good skin habits and so, and good sleep habits, which I think mm -hmm. that, you know, you mentioned sleep and like, I'm mm -hmm. really kind of a sleep nerd. And so, uh, yeah, uh, sleep is a key to life in my, in my opinion. Cause I mean, I smoked until like literally like mm, a little over two years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't smoke all the time. It wasn't like pack a day or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I should not look like this. Like, so I credit sleep a lot. Mm. 
Oh, I like that. I know. <laughs> I, I definitely love sleeping. I'm always like, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. and do a meditation. Today's the day. I'm going to go to sleep. And then it's like <laughs> 8 a.m. <laughs> snooze. <laughs> mm, I hear you. I do. I do that plenty of days. Uh, today I was overly ambitious as well. So it happens. <laughs> So I want to come back to this idea of how to be a generous leader, because this was initially why I reached out to you. And it's because I feel like there's a lot of people that are fronting on social media to be these leaders, but very few of these leaders actually um, take the time to respond to their followers and to, you know, be gracious in that way. And, um, you know, there's a lot of ego involved and I really feel like, um, from everything that I've seen from you, I mean, you do, I feel like you walk the walk, you are just, you seem to genuinely understand that there's so much meaning behind taking the time to reach out to somebody or respond, even if it's in a small way, when someone reaches out to you and like, that's just even one small place to start from, but you seem to be a generous leader and I want to get into your thoughts around that and why that's something that you seem to be, um, I, I want to say leading with. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me just say that just saying that title for me is so flattering, makes me feel so good because that is what I want to model. And I, I, like you have seen so many people, like it almost just gets me choked up. So thank you. That's so sweet. And I do, I do work to walk the walk. And I mean, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm sure there's probably examples when I'm not. So apologies if, if there are, but, um, but I really, really do try to, because like you said, I've seen so many people who don't and purport, especially you and I are involved in the spiritual community and, um, or, you know, I am tangentially and, um, and I talk a lot about that on my podcast, you know, I meditate and I do all these things and I really believe in walking the walk of love, right? Love is my religion. And so if you're going to say that, if you're going to say that you're really doing the spiritual work and you're really working to be the best version of yourself, then how are you truly treating other people? especially those that, you know, might have less followers or might, you know, um, maybe just be starting out, you know, and I, I just see the, the way that I'm treated in comparison sometimes. And it's still, it's still, and, and especially cause we're women too. And so we've got that going on. And so, uh, because, you know, men are automatically going to treat like they're, I mean, I have, so many examples. And like, there's mm -hmm. a, there's a podcaster here and he, um, did a podcast with someone I'm close to. And, uh, I don't want to name names because people could probably figure it out pretty quick. Anyway, I love I puzzles. Went, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> I can figure this out. Um, so yeah, let me deduce. So yeah. But anyway, like the way he treated me was just blow. He just like literally just blew me off when we met and I met with his podcast guest and, um, and I just was struck by, Oh, I get it. I can't do anything for you. So this is how you treat me. Mm -hmm. oh, I got it. You know, yes, it was just a value. It, it came through loud and clear. And I notice it in, in, in a lot of people who claim to be, and this is someone who claims to be like on that spiritual path, you know, and I, it's just not impressive. And so I have to check my own ego a little bit and my own judgment because I'm like, Ooh, well, F you, you know? And like, mm -hmm. and sometimes my ego will even get riled up. Like, well, you know, I'm somebody or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you get a little up in yourself. And so I have to check that. And I'm like, okay, what can I really learn from this? And so I go, okay, I really learn who I want to be. This teaches me who I want to be. That's all this is. Um, Caitlin Howe said to me not too long ago, and I've actually quoted this on my podcast a few times. She was like, she said, everything is there for your learning. And I'm like, yes, I have to check back in with that phrase a lot because it is all there for our learning. Just like, you know, when you see those egos and stuff, that's there for our learning. Instead of getting a little riled up about it, can you just go, okay, Matt, that's really great. That shows me exactly who I want to be and who I don't want to be. You know, like if, if I get to that level, 
I, I, I know how I want to treat people. And, you know, you, you had remarked on the post that I posted um, when I was coming back from Vegas and, um, and I posted a couple pictures with some very high profile people. It was like Lewis Howes and um, his girlfriend, I, I can't remember her name, Marta, and she's apparently super famous. I had no idea. And, um, and Justin Wren, my boyfriend and Dustin Poirier, who had just beaten Conor, Mc- Conor McGregor. That was and a crazy so, fight. Oh my God. Yeah. And oh. so we had taken a picture and, um, cause I told you there was a more story behind that picture. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of, it was just kind of a trigger moment for me. And we had taken a couple of pictures. It was a very crowded club and I hadn't met these people before. They knew Justin, of course, cause he's, you know, uh, pretty famous with all these people and been on a lot of podcasts and then the fighting community. And so they knew him and I was kind of just tagging along actually. And it was fun. And so, but you know, I, I felt that in the moment and I was like, I, I felt like, oh, here's where I fall, you know, like on this hierarchy and, or I'm perceiving it that way. And I have my own worthiness issues around this. And so anyway, we took a couple of pictures and when we went the next morning to look at the pictures and Justin was going to post them and everything. And he was like, can you help me edit these pictures? And I went to look at him and like in the pictures, everybody looks great, but I'm like, t- I was kind of tucked in the back, like with a shadow on my face, like half, whatever, <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay, great. You know, <laughs> you're like, this and, is just showing how I was already feeling. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what? That's funny too. It makes you wonder. Right. And so, and, and I really actually in the picture, in that moment, I felt good. I thought, I thought it was great. You know, whatever I was here for, here for it. And, um, and I just, I, I looked at it and I was like, ah, and it just kind of triggered everything in me. And it made me feel like, you know, you follow those people, they don't follow you back, you know, even though you had full conversations with them and you think maybe, you know, you're act- if, like anybody else that you had a f- conversation with like that. You're like, yeah, let's connect on Instagram. Let's you be know? friends. Want to be friends. Right. <laughs> right. That's normal behavior. Right. Yeah. But not, not, not with some people. And so you think you're friends and then, you know, you're like, okay, I, probably not, you know, mm-hmm. like I'll follow you, but then, you know, <laughs> so they post pictures, you know, without me in them and they, they like took a selfie or whatever with Justin or whatever. And I was like, that's cool. And, um, but still I saw it and I was like, all right, yeah, sure. And, um, and I was like, you know, I get it. And, you know, you just feel like you matter a little less and that doesn't feel great. And so he's asking me to edit this photo or whatever. And I, it just triggered something in me. And I was like, oh, fucking figures, you know, like here I'm in the shadow figures. And I was like, I don't want to think about this fucking picture right now. And, and I just, I don't know, I just got a little down on myself and I knew I needed to just step away from it for a few minutes. And he was like, Hey, when are you going to edit that picture? <laughs> I was like, I'm going to take a shower and stuff. And he's like, honey, I really want to post that. Will you edit that picture? I'm putting a caption. Like he kept at me. And I was like, I don't want to fucking edit that picture right now. I don't want to think yourself. Ab- <laughs> yeah, I know. Edit it yourself. And I was like, I don't want to think about pictures right now. And he was like, he was like, well, I just want to post it. Like he was arguing with me. And so finally I fucking gave up and I was like, fine. I'll edit the damn picture. And so I edited it and I had to like kind of mix two pictures together to even get my fucking face in it. I was like, great. And so I edit it and I give it to him and I'm like, there's your, and he, he could tell I had just shut down and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, I, I told you, I didn't want to deal with the picture right now. It was triggering something in me, but it gave, and, and he was like, I'm sorry. I just want to get it posted. And I'm like, yeah, I know we were both tired too. We'd stayed up real late and, you know, Mm -hmm. Vegas and and had somewhere to be. Yeah. It's exhausting. Right. Yeah. And so we were tired anyway. So when we both get tired, it's not our best for sure. Mm -hmm. We don't communicate our best. And so anyway, I took a shower and stuff and I, I kind of came down off of it. And, and that same day I hit 20,000 followers, which was really cool. And I was like, wow, that's so, that, that makes my heart feel good. And so, um, I was like, how do I say something about that? That it, cause I was like, I had to do the work within myself and go, you don't need this. You don't need to be tagged. You don't need to be followed back. You don't need it. You don't need it. Everything you have is within you. You know, those are, those are just, it's just show. I don't even know what it is exactly. 
but I don't need it. And so I had to sit with that for a while. And so that was really where my post came in and what I wrote. And I was like, how do I really sit in not needing that from someone else and learn from it and give in the way that I truly want to be, you know? And so that, that was what I wrote. And, and there's, there's so much ego involved in social media, which you said in our, right before we started recording and there is, and I have to check my own and just learn from the ego I see from other people. And it's a big lesson all the time, all the time. <laughs> oh, so yeah. What well, are your that, thoughts? That social media ego game. And I mean, it's, it's tricky because I feel like it's made to like, come on, the Instagram gods have made it that way to keep us hooked. It's like a psychological, I like to call it Instagram gods. It's like a psychological, um, thing that goes off in your brain that starts, especially as a woman, you start comparing yourself, like comparing yourself a lot and, you know, and how many likes you get, how many followers you get. And then of course, like we obviously have, like when we go on and we have this big, you know, following or, um, likes on a post or something, it's like, we get that big rush of dopamine. And then if we don't the next time we're like, Oh, it's like, we're actually, there's a lot more going on as well, psychologically. And even within our body, the way that these things are triggering us. But Mm -hmm. uh, I actually talked about this with another girlfriend and it's like, you know, sometimes you go on Instagram and it can just trigger all kinds of stuff inside of you. Like, um, I've experienced that myself like a number of times. And I actually, I tried to stay off social media for, I don't know, ages. I took about two months off, like a two month break, um, back in, I think it was April and May. And that was amazing for just like my mental health. Um, but then I was like, well, this isn't sustainable because literally everything I'm doing is online. I need to figure out how to have a healthier relationship with it. Um, but what are some of the things that you tell yourself when you notice you're in a comparison trigger? Cause like, I think that's really what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I go back to that phrase from Caitlin. It's all there for your learning. And I, t- I have started to take it like this. I think that when you want something, you're putting it out there in the universe, right? Like you're calling it into yourself and there it is. The universe is showing you like, look, what's attainable. Look, look, you, oh, you said, you know, you want to have a successful, you know, um, podcast clip or something go viral. I don't look, here's one, check it out. You know? And, and I've started to go, okay, it's not about that comparison. It is about me like going, okay, I want to up level in whatever way. And then you see something and you go, okay, wow, it's possible. And so maybe you just take it, you just flip it around to say, it's possible. It's possible. Thanks for showing me. I am grateful that I am shown. And then you just keep going. Then you just keep going. You stay in that gratitude manifestation space. Mm. And that at least that's where I'm sitting with it. And so I've just, I've just tried to flow more in that space of, 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 I am being shown. Thank you. That's cool. Like, Mm. what do you think of that? Yeah, I like that. And actually, <laughs> I I like that you view it as um, maybe I'm not necessarily there right now, but this other person who is totally just, you know, in that light is showing me what's possible for me. It's something yeah. to strive towards. And, and also, I think like that was something I actually wanted to come to is organic following because wow, we got to address the smoke and mirrors aspect of podcasting and social media. You can buy downloads, you can buy followers, you can buy subscribers. You can buy downloads of your podcast? Apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Um, yeah. And so there's, and and it figures, it figures. I'm sure you can (laughs) can buy everything. I'm sure. Right. Oh, absolutely. It didn't occur to me. Wild. I know. I didn't realize that either. And I kind of was like, I felt a little cheated because I was like, well, I'm like, here I am over here 
grinding, trying to do it all the organic way. But I had, I switched things around in my mind where I was like, when you buy following and you buy downloads and subscribers, that's not converting to anything of value in the long run. Like and it, it fucks up your algorithm too. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, let me just say it, it will fuck up your algorithm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also too, like coming back to the ego, if you come, if, if you return to a place of, um, how can I be of service and genuinely interact with the people that are already following me and mm-hmm. like be in integrity and not, see people as objects, but see them and know that they're a person, like a human on the other side of that. I feel like, like maybe the, maybe the, um, the climb is a little slower and maybe, maybe you just stay where you're at, but yet you do so much like meaningful and beautiful work that in my mind is something to be celebrated. I think that's like, that's a form of success. And so, Yeah. I think also I've noticed, um, with social media where you're like, Oh, this person has this crazy following. And then I'm like, my partner's the one he's, he's quite clever. He's the one who's like, he's like, Oh, he's like, okay, this is how you'll mine is too. Mine is too. He's (laughs) like, let's take a look. Oh, look at this. Look at this. He figures it all out. I'm like, damn, you're good. (laughs) I know. And then you're just like, you're like, okay, like this person doesn't actually have the, like, and to me, I, I think how I feel, and this is coming back to self-worth, how I feel about myself and knowing that I had integrity and that I did it the, the organic way that I don't ever have to have a moment where I'm like, I'm a fraud where I know I would, if I did that, I would feel in some way, like I'm cheating or something like that. Sure. Yeah. I understand that. And for me, I also view it as, I have a few thoughts on this. Uh, I also view it as so many times I'm like, okay, this is a really good opportunity for me to look into how I'm judging someone. Cause mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like to judge. And so I'm like catching myself. I'm like, okay, I'm mm-hmm. judging. I don't know their path. You know, I don't know what's going on with them. Cause a, a lot of me wants to be like, mm, I'm better. Cause I'm doing it like this, you know, or whatever, <laughs> but no, but I mean, and that's not to say I haven't paid for things before. Cause I have, mm-hmm. but I, I, I really make a conscious effort. Well, I haven't in a really long time, but mm-hmm. anyway, um, but not downloads, dude, that was, that was news. But I just think <laughs> that, um, I just, I do try to just n- not, judge Mm -hmm. but there is a lot of ego involved and I'm looking for this quote where is it I want to share this one little quote I read with you uh, the other day um it was about embarrassment and I heard it in conversations with God which I've been listening to and it was about oh here it is and I just feel like there's a level of I'm going to be embarrassed if I only have three likes, you know, or Mm -hmm. whatever it is. That's, that's your ego. And here it is. Here's the quote. Embarrassment is the response of a person who still has an ego investment in how others see him. Mm. Try laughter instead. And that's it. It's your ego investment in how others see you. And so that is, that goes back to that. I don't need that. Like, because that follow back and stuff, that's, that's me thinking, oh, I need him to follow me back. Like I, I need that. That's my ego investment. And it's like feeling proud, you know, the, the opposite mm-hmm. probably of embarrassment. And so can you let go of that? And so, and, and, and then that flows into another thought I had with what you were saying, which is my daughter was asking me, I got kind of down because I do these Instagram live meditations every Wednesday morning at 9am. And, uh, and then I put them up on my IGTV and it's probably not the best time in the world. It's central time. It's probably not the best time in the world to do it. Cause a lot of people are at work. <laughs> and so, but it's convenient for me. And so anyway, one daughter, my daughter is 12. And so I'm conscious, I'm constantly staying conscious of what I'm modeling to my children about social media, which is big, right? Cause it's going to be a, she's already on TikTok, but not Instagram yet. Mm-hmm. My older one is. And so She was like, I was like, yeah, I don't know. Just, I don't know if I should keep doing these meditations. I feel like nobody cares, you know? And, um, and she was like, but actually that's not true. I've gotten a lot of people that have reached out and that makes me so grateful. Um, 
but she goes, this was a little while back. And she goes, well, mom, how many people tune in when you're doing it? And I was like, it varies, honey. I was like, sometimes it's like 15, sometimes it's like three, you know, but I think I'd had a day where there were zero people at one point. Like I looked up during the meditation of zero and I was like, <sighs> and I was already feeling down that day. And I was like, oh my God, you know, and I think that's what prompted this. And she was like, she goes three people. She's like, mom, that's good. That's three people. And Aww. I was like, you're right. That is three people. It's mm -hmm. like, just like what you were saying. That is three people. That is three actual humans that mm -hmm. you're connecting with at that point. So like, you know, quick getting caught in the numbers game, even if you're buying downloads or something like, no, back it up and like connect with who you're connecting with and then really make it count. You know, so I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to do the best fucking job for those three people or one person or zero people you know, or myself. I don't know for that. I can. And so it's just all a process of keeping yourself in check. And just like everything else in the whole wide world, it is a practice. Mm, <laughs> There's yeah. <my> soapbox. <laughs> no, I, I love it though. And I know I, I can relate to what you're saying. A hundred percent. I actually offered a free meditation in the park. I was like, oh, re restrictions are lifting. I'm going to offer this meditation. And I'm sitting there and like we did. Like checking your watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and in all fairness, um, I am not the best at promoting and marketing things. I'm just like. Eh, Me either. Like, I'm there. I'm yeah. with you. There's something about that that I'm just like, oh, well, I'll, I'll outsource that stuff at some point. But <laughs> I was just like, okay. Then also on top of that, we had gone through this crazy heat wave, like never we've, it was the hottest. I think, I think we were the hottest place in North America. So we usually get, um, pretty like nice summers, but we'll get like a high of, I don't know, maybe 35 or 38 at the most. What is that? Uh, what's, that in, what's that in Fahrenheit? I'm sorry, I, know. I think. I think in Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to look that up because I do know that I have a lot of my audiences from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bear with there. me. Let's see here. I got you. Okay. 35 in Fahrenheit. Let's see. I got you. It is, um, oh God, like 90 four degrees. Okay. That's pretty warm. Yeah. That's pretty warm. Mm -hmm. it's, but that's, that's like when it gets really hot, but we, so what did it get up to? It got up to 47 one day, 47. Oh, that's, hold on. Let me check what that is. Hold up. That is India uh, hot. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it is 116 degree. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. 116. Holy shit, dude. I have. A, that's <laughs> really, that's Vegas hot. For oh, sure. it totally was. I was like, this is how hot it gets in India in the summertime. I was like, this is wow. hot. So, um, you know, everyone's rushing to get ACs and we're running out of, you know, you got like people online that are like, yeah, I got an AC, $8,000. <laughs> Oh, like it, it is. Was, That's how much it is. Oh, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And, and so we, we managed to get one again. My partner's clever. He got one, he, he got one before the heat wave hit us. So anyways, needless to say the morning that I had planned to do this meditation, we had been going through a heat wave. Everyone was like, probably like, I'm not, like going I'm not going anywhere, mm -mm. <laughs> but I had two, I had two people show up and I just had this moment where I was like, you know what? I have two people here. I have two people. I know that's such a long, precisely. long no, way to precisely. get to the point. But. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm with you. Precisely. Yeah. I've got two people here and, um, you know, the they fact showed that they showed up. So how are you showing up? You yeah. know, are you going to be like, oh, fuck this. Or are you going to be like, no, I'm fucking here for it and bringing my A game. Hells yeah. And you know, and that was the thing. It was like, they both showed up and it was so nice. And I was like, you know what, this is more intimate. If I had a big group of people, it wouldn't be the same. And then we went, we had coffees and we went for a walk along the river and we had this amazing conversation. And I was like, you know what? Like, I think it's that perspective of, you know, um, how are you impacting the people around you and also showing up for the people that show up for you. Like we, we all like this sort of, you know, idea of like impact, 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 but it's like, no, what is true impact impacting someone for five minutes, five seconds, or like actually something like Caitlin said to you, that's impacted you in a way that's now 
really truly stayed with you, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I do think there is like a bit of a shift of perspective in like how we view these things. Um, and I, I and think that, like, and that ego can slip in there and it's like, mm, I'm too good for this, you know, or something, I, you know, and it, you're not, you're not mm -hmm. check yourself, you know, you're just, you're not totally. And I think, you know, there's like that aspect of the ego. And then there's also like that. And, and I sometimes recognize for myself when I have that little icky feeling of, Ooh, like, you know, Oh, they read my message. I can see that they read my message. <laughs> motherfucker didn't respond. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, who am I? I'm oh, okay. A good example. You know? a good example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you just have to go. Gotcha. You know, exactly. Yeah. yeah I pitched myself to, on a pod. I pitched myself to a, a local podcast not too long ago. And I was like, I like this chick. And mm -hmm. I was like, I think I'd like to be on her podcast. You know, she's got one. And I was like, I think I'd be a good fit. So I pitched myself and just like crickets, just fuck it. She's like, I'm in a meeting. I'll get back to you. Ne never. Like I never heard another word. And I was like, okay. Oh. You know, like and it just kind of, yeah, you just have to, you just have to just sort of just go, no, you just keep going. You just keep yes. going. And, and that shows you again, how you want to be. You want to be the person that responds. Mm. You want to be the person that's kind. And granted, we can't always get to everything. I understand that. But mm -hmm. I, I cited this guy, Garen Jones, who is, I cited him. I tagged him in that post that we were referencing from mm -hmm. Instagram. And, um, he truly is a dude that walks the walk. I mean, he has like, I don't know how many followers, like 700,000 or whatever. And, um, and, but he is local in Austin. So we have some mutual friends, but he posted a video and I was so taken by it. And I, his message, and I was like, this dude is awesome. Follow. And I, I messaged him right away. And I was like, would you be on my podcast? You know, I, I love this video and I love your message or whatever. And within the day he got back to me and said, yes. And I was like, and he followed me back. And I was like, okay, this one, he knows what's up. He's real deal. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, um, going to my boyfriend had met him before. And so I ended up going to his birthday party with a whole bunch of other people. And there was, um, there was a moment where I got to meet his wife and I was like, yeah, he said yes, just blindly to my podcast. And she said, you know what? He says yes to every podcast. And she was like, it takes a lot of time, but he does. And I was like, that's really cool. I want to be like that. And she was like, yeah, he remembers what it was like to start. Cause he lived in his car for like three years, you know, mm. and had nothing. And she was like, he remembers what it's like to, to start. And he always wants to, um, to give to people and to be like that. And I was like, Oh, that's a, that's a great guy. I cannot wait to have him on. I'm actually recording with him soon. I'm not sure when ours is coming out here, but mm -hmm. it'll be up on my podcast really by the end of August. And so anyway, I just, I just was like, oh yeah. Okay. This type of person sets the example, take note. And so, you know, it's just, it's just, they're all out there. So you calling me that really just, um, is an honor truly. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's the path I want to follow. Those are, those are, that's the, the way I want to be. And, um, and you gotta keep your chin up, you know, cause it's easy to get down on yourself. Mm -hmm. Even like you said, it, that's a practice. It's always there. You know, these little self doubt things are always there. We just have to learn how to cope with them better. And so, you know, keep your chin up because you just keep modeling that person you want to be. Mm -hmm. And and sorry, one other thing, um, when, you said something, um, about when we were like talking about, okay, calling things in and being shown things. And that's another example of it. Like we have to genuinely be happy for these people. So when you're manifesting that and you see it and you want to compare, you have to find a way to genuinely be happy. And so you, I think the first step is genuinely saying like, I'm happy to be shown this and that it's possible for myself. And then you have to be like, you are fucking whoever it is, whether mm. they're coming from ego or not, you have to be like, yeah, dude, or chick, whatever the fuck you're genuinely <laughs> killing it. Way to fucking go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and hell yeah. Let's all keep rising. Absolutely. So, you have to yeah. celebrate. And, mm -hmm. and I think having that humility too, where you're like knowing that, 
starting out is so nerve wracking. And to keep that in mind, to know what it was like to feel like you were at the bottom of the food chain and to just be this little tiny fish in this very huge pond. And, uh, I actually really love those stories of people who, you know, like rags to riches or people who were, you know, yeah. homeless and went through like crazy, crazy I background too. because Thanks it shows you that like, no matter what you've been through, these people are demonstrating what's possible for you. And so rather than, and this was actually something I did want to bring up is this whole concept of putting people on a pedestal. Um, and I have fallen into that before, um, where I've been, and I've, I definitely, you know, aside from like the ego and stuff, I've got like, you know, a background, um, of like, you know, being bullied really bad through school and like that stuff stays with you. It really I'm does. Sorry. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And so like, mm -hmm. I feel like when you feel a sense of rejection, there's also that like little inner child. that's like, Oh, no one loves me. No, you know, no one cares about me. You know, you're always the outsider. You're, you know, you're the, you're the one being left out and recognizing when that comes in and then not falling into the trap of putting yourself beneath somebody. It's like, so you know, this person's been at this game for 10 years, 20 years, of course. And they right. work hard. Of course they are where they, where they are. And then, like you said, celebrating, being excited and like being able to really like see that person killing it and be happy for them. Because you know that these little incremental steps every single day of investing into yourself and your career and keeping your heart in the right place. Mm-hmm checking the ego, like you said, but like really keeping your heart in the right place. If you keep at something day over day, year over year, you're going to notice you'll look back and be like, holy shit. Like, fuck. Yeah. Fuck, go yeah. me. I was so right proud on. of myself because I, I kept at it. And now you're able to, to say, well, you know, this is something that's going to be like a, like a lifelong process of learning and growing, but this person is over here showing me what's possible. And mm -hmm. they don't need to be this like God in the sky and, you know, be so far, you know, unattainable, unattainable and, and outside of my grasp. It's like you, that I think is something that has helped me a lot. And even just to not get so nervous with podcast guests, you know, like having people on and talking to people, it's like you, everybody, we're all just human beings. Like we're not mm -hmm. these perfect godly and we'll, I mean, we all are, you know, part yes, and parcel of it. Yeah, <laughs> but we're you still, know, we're still putting our pants on, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. and I think I think to tag on to that bullying thing that you were saying, where we can feel less than. I think um, some of these like social media triggers that we were talking about. The flip side of that bullying thing can also be, or feeling a little bit less than, can also be getting a chip on your shoulder. Like, mm -hmm. well, fine, I'll show you, you mm -hmm. know, and. Anytime we have these thoughts, our heart is not in the right place. So mm -hmm. I think those are really important to tap into too. Like if you're feeling like, fine, I'll show you like a little of that can be really useful for mm -hmm. sure in our own drive to do something. But at the same time, we can't let that take over, like keep mm -hmm. your heart in the right place. And, and you're not doing it just to prove out of, uh, cause, because that's still coming from a place of unworthiness. That's still mm -hmm. coming from a place of you're going to then get there and be too big for your britches. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and that, that's not keeping your heart in a love space and in the space of like who you truly want to be like on your deathbed, you wouldn't, you're not going to feel good about that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so how can we, how can we really just, just look at those, both those aspects of that coin, I think, and stay in a really, you know, more positive space because I've been studying a lot of like which I'm sure you do this too, a lot of like Abraham Hicks and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I'm really tuning in to every little thing that I might be attracting with my own vibration. And oh, so I was literally just thinking that. Yeah. So you're not putting it in the right place. You just gotta, you gotta tap in. And I'm even conscious about even the smallest word, you know, um, one that I've been kind of hooked on lately was like getting out of debt 
debt, 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 paying off my debt. Mm. Like, no, scrub that word, scrub it, get into surplus. I want to get into surplus. Like, because, you know, they say that the universe doesn't even know the difference. It's like, oh, debt, here you go. Here's some debt. You know, like, you're like, oh, wait, no, no, no. I don't want more debt, you know? And so like, um, you know, you just like, can you, can you really find that space of genuine happiness of tapping into this ain't no chip on my shoulder. This is like, this is like for real. I really want to be here and doing it for the right reasons. Oh, absolutely. I actually just did a post the other day where it was like, you know, is your energy inviting or off-putting? I saw that. It was good. Really good. Yeah. Well, it was just something that I was reflecting on. Thank you as well. I was just, you know, something Mm -hmm. I was like reflecting on in my own life where Um, you know, if you're writing something and you're thinking like, I really hope this reaches the person (laughs) who needs to hear it today versus what do people want to hear? Let me write the, you know, let, let me, you know, let me write this and curate something to hope it'll, you know, get likes and viral or become viral. And I think the energy behind Oh, the energy behind what we do is so important. And I had this little sigh here because I was thinking to people that are um, trying to manipulate through, I actually recently had something happen where, you know, someone was coming to me for one thing turns out. And I kind of, and I felt it. I was like, I don't, and I said it you to knew. my partner. <gasps> you knew I felt, already. I, mm-hmm. I felt it. And this is like what I said to my partner. What was it? What was it? <laughs> I know, right? It's like, <laughs> I want to know. Well, I won't name, I won't name names, but anyways, this person had come to me and, uh, they wanted some art mm-hmm. and, um, I, you know, for, <sighs> I'm very clear about how I do and have my process. I make sure it's kind of industry standard. Sorry, my dog's barking. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Guard dogs. (laughs) Um, And so like, I'm very clear about how I, you know, how I communicate uh, my process and anyways, but I was kind of, I kind of had a feeling that like, there was like an ulterior motive behind, you know, them reaching out to me and I I could just feel it. And, um, when I tried to be professional and guide the exchange and keep it on track, and this person was not able to manipulate me in the way that they had hoped, it actually got pretty ugly. Um, and I got some voice notes and stuff basically like that were really putting me down and there was, I, and I just didn't engage in it. I'm like, I'm not feeding this, but good for you. And this is, this is somebody from the spiritual community who knows people that we know. And I was just like, I was so, I was so off put by it, but at the same time, I was like, I also felt it before it happened and I made sure that I set really clear boundaries about, you know, and, and kept professional and everything, but you know, you do encounter people who think they are so freaking slick and that they can just, you know, you know, they just, they think that they can manipulate anybody, but somebody who's really in tune, and this is what the post was about. Um, and I think I actually posted this before this had, had even happened. <laughs> the universe is like, mm, uh-huh. let's wow. see, let's prove, <laughs> let's, let's, let's test out your, your let's wow. test out your theory. But, mm-hmm. you know, and I just had this moment where I was like, people don't, I think people often, I'm going to rephrase that. Some people think that they are, um, slick and smooth and that people won't know, but when you're really in tune, you can feel if someone is being disingenuous or if they have ulterior motives behind what they're doing. And and you look back so many times and you're like, I felt that, you know, mm-hmm. and like, you're like, ah, why didn't I listen to my intuition? I knew, mm-hmm. I knew, but you did, you did in that instance. And I mean, let this be just a a message to whoever's listening. You probably need this right now in your life. (laughs) Yeah. And also too, I, at the same time was like, in what ways have I been manipulative with my energy? And actually Aubrey is the one who had said this to me, um, on, um, 
he was like on the fit for service app. He had done a live and it was so interesting because he answered, he answered not my question, but what he said was like this sort of, um, like breakthrough for me. And what I had asked was, you know, how do you, it was like something about like, how do you deal with pride and like, or how do you, cause as I was thinking of pride as in like ego and get, you know, your head being too big. And he said, you know, like if you're, you know, if you're out there and you're killing it, you know, be proud of who you are, be proud of yourself. But like, it's more so along the lines of, um, you know, like, and it wasn't even what I had said what I had asked, but I was like, Whoa, this is something that I learned to do to survive, but trying to manipulate people into liking me. So that's a different form of like manipulating and like energy, but people can also feel that too. Like there's a difference between being like, Hey, Amy, like you're a generous leader. I think you're rad and really meaning it and not trying to butter you up and not saying something because I, or like, you know, offering something to somebody because you want something in exchange. You're just genuinely you know, feeling it and you're in a place of giving. And there's a difference between being like, I'm hungry for love and validation and acceptance. So if I do this thing for this person, then maybe I'll get their love and maybe they'll like me. And like he said, how freaking exhausting, how exhausting that is. And I realized that And this goes back to like my little inner wounded child. It's all like, you know, nobody loves me (laughs) growing up. I learned to, oh, if I do nice things for people, then maybe they'll like me and I can, you know, get friends that way. And so it was just really interesting when I then made this post and I was thinking, you know, coming from that place of need and, and lack, people also feel that and go, Ooh, like this doesn't feel like you're giving because you gen genuinely want to give to me. It feels like, even though I can't put my finger on it, like there's something attached here. Have you felt that? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know. Yes, absolutely. I know that. And, um, and I I can be a little naive with that too, you know, and I've had to get better about tapping into my intuition in those situations, but I absolutely know what you're talking about. And, um, you know, it just, it just happened the other day and Justin saw it and I didn't, you know, and, and he's very in tune with that, but it was from a man. So I, I think I, you know, just thought he was being nice, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, no, he's not just being nice. And like, he pointed it out and he was right actually. And, um, and I just, uh, you know, I'm a little torn on it because a part of me is just like, fuck it. I'm just going to be nice. You know, Mm -hmm. even if they are trying to manipulate me, a lot of times I'm just going to be nice anyway and Mm -hmm. come from a place of love. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean I want to be taken advantage of not by any stretch, but, Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I consider myself savvy enough to not be taken advantage of. And, Mm -hmm. and so, um, yeah, you know, it's funny in that I, I know someone who, um, let me see how to put this without naming names, um, <laughs> but um, who I got the impression was faking it some on social media, right? Mm-hmm. And um, may or may not been have been a guest on my show. And I, afterward, I was like, was I taken advantage of here? Was this, was I duped a bit, you know? And, mm-hmm. um and I just had to roll with it. I was like, no, you know what? I think this person's heart is in the right place. And I just, I was like, it was still wonderful. And so, yeah. So I just had to just be like, nah, it, it is what it's supposed to be. And I learned and it's interesting, you know, mm-hmm. it's interesting and it involved social media and stuff. So that, that was an interesting, like sort of lesson, um, so I know what you mean. And I just, I guess I just still, even in those spaces, I'm like, who do I want to be? Do I want to be the one that's like, fuck you, you know, quit trying to manipulate me. Mm-hmm. Or do I want to be the one that's like, that's like, okay, here's my boundary. Like mm-hmm. you were with, like you were with the art, you know, mm-hmm. here's my boundary and um, I'm going to honor myself. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm going to be loving and kind mm-hmm. and still, you know, show up as the best fucking me that I'm going to be, you know? Yes. And then, and then afterwards, when that like interaction is over inside, you stop 
engaging in the energy around it. That's something that I've had to I like really, that. I like that. Cause like I will ruminate and I, you know, and then, you know, I'll be like doing something. I'll be like, mm, like yeah, f- back you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big, or I have been in the past, a big ruminator. So yeah. yeah. And, and uh-huh. so it's like learning to be like, mm, I that's done and I'm not feeding this anymore. And I don't need to label somebody as a bad person or whatever, because there could be some stuff going on on their end of it. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean I need to roll over and just take, take shit. I don't, but at no. the same time, I think it's how, like you said, it's how you present yourself. And I think it's how you walk away feeling about yourself and knowing that you are still polite and, you know, depending on the situation, you know, a level of professionalism. So you're walking away and you're like, well, you know, that's done. I handled that the best that I could. And now I don't need to keep living it. It's time to let it go, which Oh my goodness. And it's like your, it's like your energy post too, you know, like, and what we've been talking about when you're ruminating on that person and that negative thing, guess what you're calling, you're going to see them more on social media. You're calling in that energy. You're summoning that. I know Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in energy as, as woo woo as that can be. I really truly believe it. And so you are calling that back to you. So cut that shit out, you Mm -hmm. know, cut, cut that rumination on that person out. I just, I literally just watched my boyfriend do it for months. And he was like, so annoyed by someone and he, and he's pretty high vibing and all that, but he Mm -hmm. kept ruminating on it. And I was like, dude, every time you're doing this and talking about it and perpetuating it, you're calling this person back into your energy field. You're going to have more of it. What are you doing? Also, he's like, I, he's like, I know. And I'm like, no, you apparently you don't. Cause you're still doing it. <laughs> and so I just took it as a lesson to me too. And I was like, okay, take note. Don't do that. Don't do that. And, but, but easier said than done because mm-hmm. I've spent many years, I'm saying this at nearly 50 years old. So, you know, I, I last year I did a series of ketamine infusions at a clinic here in Austin. And that helped reprogram and rewire some of the brain stuff that goes on with rumination. And so, you know, sometimes we need to push ourselves a little bit more and those were scary and, you know, a big deal for me, but Mm -hmm. they really did, um, get me out of some rumination patterns that I had. Yeah. Cause even when you're like ruminating on something, <clears throat> aside from calling that energy back to you, something, um, that this, um, uh, elder that I've done some ceremonies with from, he's from the Navajo nation. Actually, if you get an opportunity to go and participate in, uh, one of those ceremonies, uh, it's what is it? Amazing. Or something? Um, yeah. So it's, um, crystal gazing and peyote. He's just this amazing elder and cool. he's yeah, yeah I'm totally yeah. interested well he wow. was actually he was supposed to come up here and I was going to plan a ceremony and they turn wow. I guess they won't let people into Canada right now no they won't it's pretty hard I have a friend who was just trying to go and then and then actually he's vaccinated and had tested positive it's weird oh well um, you know so, but something that you know he was saying like and, and this was something that we had learned in one of the ceremonies that we had sat in um, with him was that like, even if somebody is thinking bad thoughts about somebody else, you're sending them a black magic. Like it's 100%. black magic. Words can be so um, powerful when you speak against somebody. Um, I, I just, and I just had a really powerful uh, podcast with um, Wayne Dyer's daughter, Serena Dyer just came out today when we're recording oh, wow. this, but she talks a lot about Ho'oponopono, which is the mm. opposite of that. You know, it's just sitting in that good space of sending love, forgiveness, um, and, and peace to mm. someone else. And that matters. That shows up thinking the bad thoughts, thinking the good thoughts, whatever it is it's being sent. It's getting out there. Your messages are going out. (laughs) Absolutely. You know, Wayne Dyer was actually, Wayne, I swear Wayne Dyer saved my life. Wow. Really? Oh yeah. I, um, was such a, I was pretty, he's pretty magical. Yeah. I, I was in, uh, my grade 11. Yeah. Grade 11 year. And I, um, had been going through like 
you know, all kinds of stuff. And I was in a friend's garage and their mom was getting rid of a box of books. And I found this Wayne Dyer book called inspiration. I read it. It, it, I was like 17. I was so, so lost and confused. And it, uh, it, it's got me, I swear that was the beginning of what has led me here. So I, yeah, Yeah, I bet it was, it found you just when it needed to. Oh, you'll Mm -hmm. have to check out the podcast. It's really good. So she just co-wrote a book with her sister Sage, um, called the knowing, and it was after their father's death. And Mm. it's just, it's not really lessons necessarily from him. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's really cool, but it is also talking about tapping into that inner knowing that we were talking about, you know, when you know, and you're like, why don't I pay attention to that? You know? Oh. So yeah, it's really, it's really powerful. Really I'll definitely incredible. check mm-hmm. it out. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Actually your intuition and developing that inner knowing I, I've kind of come to liken it to um, a muscle, the more you use it and the more you, you listen to it. I feel like the stronger it becomes. It's absolutely, you know, mm-hmm. we, we often get in our own way and stop listening and make up excuses. And we have these big, long stories as to why we're going to do this and we're not going to do that. But I think when you know, and you listen to that, that connection to the universe or God or whatever you want to call it, your spirit guides, I feel like that just becomes so much more in tune and strong and you know, when you need to act and you know, when you need to like step back, step step back from things. It's just like everything else. It's a practice and it becomes stronger the more we do it and you can listen to it much more clearly. Right. Absolutely. So, um, uh, something else that I wanted to come back to, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've drank too much of this tea. Can I run to the bathroom really quick? <laughs> yes. I'm so sorry. Can I'll you edit this it. out? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, pause it. Hold on. Okay. Oh, it's so weird how Zoom has started doing that. Recording stopped. Re- <laughs> recording in progress. <laughs> like a good imitation. I, like <laughs> I know it's uh, it's very loud and jarring when it it didn't it used is. to do that, but. I mean, I did actually record an episode. Well, I thought I was recording a podcast one time and, um, this was before I had created the auto setting to start as soon as I opened zoom, mm. I had this amazing conversation oh, shit. and then had to, oh, that was like the worst. I had a few, I had a few of those moments along the way of like podcasts that, you know, didn't record or something happened with the software and, Oh my gosh. And then yeah. you have to go to the person and be like, Oh, so thank you so yeah. much for your time. But <laughs> no, I, I hear you. So what I wanted to come um, back to is, um, comfort zones and maybe like to speak to, um, you know, anyone that's listening that is, um, you know, has, has a dream or has some goals or aspirations, but there is a little bit of that fear that's holding them back and like how to get outside of that comfort zone, something kind of tactical or some tools that you could, um, recommend that help you personally. Yeah, I know. I wish there was like a specific tool, But really it's a lot of the things that we're talking about, you know, it's about not comparing yourself. It's about finding those little tactics that you can go back to in your brain. This is all here for my learning, right? Mm. Instead of being like, I can't fucking do this, you know, or I'm too old. And I just had somebody say that the other day and she was like, I'm too old for that or whatever. And I was like, no, you're not, you know, do you, do you know who Batty Winkle is? Like, do you follow her? She's Mm -hmm. like this freaking 80 90 year old woman that like is just killing it on social media and you know she dresses up and does all this stuff and and you're just like no you know any age that you are or whatever you want to do give it a shot but it's that fear that's tied to failure you know and and as we get older we get embarrassed and that's our ego you know just just tap into these more spiritual aspects and you can get past that and um, for me, I had some nervous breakdowns, you know, and, and I channeled it into writing. I channeled it into art, into what I was doing. And that was a good thing. I have a song called meltdown and that song is for real. Like I says, um, um, you know, crying on the kitchen floor. And I was, I, I did that. And, 
and I was drinking and, you know, like you just, you just fall apart. And that the reason I fell apart was because I was comparing myself. I was comparing myself to my old bandmates. I was comparing myself to people that, you know, were very successful at music. And I thought, well, I should be successful too. These are good songs. What, what am I doing wrong? And you're not doing anything wrong. you just need to just um, take a step back into yourself, tap into those frequencies and keep going, you know, take the next step. We let ourselves get our overwhelmed too. So many times, like we need to be at the end and can you actually enjoy the process of every single step? Mm. Because it's not really about the end game. We like to think it is. I want to go win a Grammy, but really it's about all those little steps in between and can, that's the paradox. Everything's a paradox. So can instead of just working toward that and staying focused on the end, can you focus on the moment and really find the beauty and joy in that? Because that actually makes the end way more successful and every, every subsequent moment way more successful. So it's about living in the present and you've still got a goal, but can you really enjoy this moment? Can you enjoy where you are in your followership? Can you enjoy the three that tune in on your meditation rather than getting caught up in the, here's my goal and I need it this way. You know, you, you don't define what the success of it is. The universe does. And so you have to just roll with what you're being shown in that moment and truly find happiness in it. And it's a trick and it's a practice. <laughs> and it, it, sometimes it doesn't feel like it makes any sense, but it does. And if you feel called to do it, pay attention to those spots where you're finding resistance. And if you are forcing it, if you do feel like you're really forcing, find the easy path there's, there's no awards being given out for like busting your fucking ass. Cause it's so hard, you know, mm. just, yes. Sometimes we have challenges. If you're meeting those challenges and really still enjoying it and knowing that you're following your purpose. Awesome. Great. But if you are finding yourself miserable and it, you're meeting challenge after challenge, just sit back and see what's flowing to you and take a good look at what you want to be doing and find where it's flowing because mm. we can all push sometimes. And I think that was me for music. You know, a lot of it was a push for me and it was a good push in a lot of ways because I learned a lot, but at the same time, that's not my true purpose and calling. And I know that, and I'm, I'm good at it and I'm still doing it. I'm writing a musical right now. And so I'm still enjoying that and learning from it, but it really is fuel for my bigger purpose, which is my podcast and using my voice. So mm. that was a long winded way to say that that's some tools, but <laughs> pay <laughs> no, attention to the it. moment, find, find that pleasure in the moment. And if you're not, if you're finding a lot of resistance, pay attention to that resistance and figure out, okay, is that good resistance or bad resistance? I would recommend the book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. I'm a huge Stephen Pressfield fan, particularly of that book, which was one of his first of a series. And it's a super easy read. And um, that's what I like about it too. Mm. And have you read it? No, War I've of heard Art. of it. Yeah, it's great. And so I've read it many, many times. My copy is way marked up and, uh, and like one chapter is like a page or like a paragraph or something. So that's great. Like the longest chapter is like three pages. And so it's easy to get through. And there's just so much like clear wisdom in that about resistance and about flow and about doing what's important versus doing what's urgent, urgent's paying the bills. Important is sitting down and actually doing the writing and doing the work. Mm. I had this chick, uh, message me one day and she was like, I want to write a book like you did. I'm, I'm, I love what you did or whatever. It's like, thank you. And she's like, so, um, I'm starting to write it. Who published yours? And I was like, uh -oh. I was like <laughs> hold, your, hold on, babe. I was like, you know, take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. she did, I didn't say what you wanted to hear, but I was like, just back it up and, you know, relax into the writing, get it written get a draft first, you know, and then worry about that. Just take it one step at a time. Cause otherwise it can seem quite overwhelming. And, oh, yeah. and if you just like, if you want to start your podcast, well, um, then just start recording, you know, mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about all the rest of it just yet. 
like uh, um, we can get carried away in too many big details. And that's, that's not even relevant right now. Stay, oh. with, stay with what's relevant right now. Absolutely. So much of what you just said was just gold. Like oh, I, thank you. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got in a zone. I was like, just focus, like seeing white. Sometimes I just see white and I just talk. <laughs> My, well, maybe one might say you were in the flow. You were in the flow state. You're damn right. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Hell> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, really. Um, what you're saying is so true. Uh, I definitely, when I first started my podcast was like, I had somebody, um, you know, tell me I should start vlogging and I don't know. I'm just not really good with talking to a video camera, which is funny. Cause I, I was an actor for like most of my yeah, childhood really? and yeah, yeah, I did. I was, that's what I did. But, um, the idea of vlogging and stuff just felt kind of like, eh, I don't know if that's really, or blogging. I don't know. Nothing seemed to really fit. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to start a podcast. And I rented a, or I got a library card and I went to the Vancouver public library and I rented out the room and it was this tiny little room. Oh my God. It was so like my first episode was with a girlfriend and uh, it was a great, it actually turned out really great, but it was like this tiny little room. We're touching knees. It was so hot. I was sweating like profusely (laughs) because it was just this tiny little room. Um, but that's how I started. It was like, I didn't have, um, cause sometimes I'll get people who message me and they're like, Oh, I want to start a podcast. I'm like, do it. That's awesome. They're like, Oh, what do you have? And you know, like, what do I need? And like, I'll tell them some of like what I use and like what I, what I like, you know, with my interface and a microphone, but you really don't need so much stuff. If you don't know if you're even going to like podcasting, if you can find somewhere where you can go like rent a room, like try that first. Um, but you, I, I wanted to come back to what you're saying about the flow state because, um, that was actually what my breaking point with acting was because for years, like I started acting when I was eight, when I was eight years old. So I was a little ham. I loved performing. I did musical theater through high school. Like I just loved being, you know, in the performing sort of light. And then I kind of got out of it for a few years and then I went back in and then I would come back out and then I go back in. And finally I had this point where it just seemed so hard. Like I kept coming up against like one, just one dead end after the other. And then I started to realize how, realize how much I liked, um, you know, doing student films or doing independent films or, and I do not mean pornographic independent films. I always have to clarify that because really? people's oh. Yeah. Cause people, I understood. I understood. <laughs> okay. People go there, you know, indie films no. uh, and then, you know, acting classes and all of that. But I started to hate auditioning and I started to hate working on professional sets and things like that. And everything just felt like, and what I realized was that my ego was what had been telling me to be there, but my heart was the same thing. I wanted to write and I wanted to share stories. And so for me, I actually started moving more into, let me write my own stuff and, you know, start writing my book and all of that. Because what I realized was things were so hard for me. And it felt like I was swimming against the current because I was. And then as soon as you get in alignment with like your calling or your mission, Mm -hmm. and for you, like your podcasting, it starts to feel like you're floating down the stream versus swimming against the current. Yeah. Acting is a good example. I'm glad you brought that up because, um, because like you said, you were, you were hating those things. So when you were in the moment, you, you, you didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. That's the resistance that I'm talking about. That's, um, yes, it's hard, but also you were not in alignment with it. You were not happy in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so you have to pay attention. Like, If I'm really wanting to do this, am I really enjoying the moment of it? That's, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, if I catch myself like, uh, I don't want to record this podcast or so I catch myself immediately. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You love doing this. Change that inner monologue right now. And I'll Mm -hmm. say, I love doing this. I can't wait to do it. I'm so excited to do it. Mm -hmm. And then that, that will create more of that flow. You know, if you're going into the audition already, like, fuck, everything's a dead end. I hate this, you know, like Mm -hmm. 
okay, then there you are. Right. And so that, that mental attitude and that alignment of your heart, like get it, get it in flow, get it, get it where it's lining up. And then, and so you were already like moving in this other direction. Yes, it was hard, but there was also the convergence of your own feelings and what was going on. Right. And so I don't know which feeds which, you know, you talk to Abraham Hicks, you're going to get a certain answer. Um, but um, it's something to pay attention to. Right. And then you're like, okay, do I really, really love this? Do I want to stick with it? Then I need to get into that moment of, I love doing this. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm going to bring to every single audition performance or whatever it is you're doing podcast, mm-hmm. right? I love doing this. I'm so lucky. And that's one of these, one of these things is like what I've been writing down or like an affirmation is I want to make loads of money at something I'm so passionate about that I would do for free. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, then, then where are you? Like, are you paying attention to those moments? Like if you're writing, is that something you're so passionate about that you would do for free? There's mm-hmm. that flow. And that's where you're going to be in a state of flow and less resistance because you love it because you love it. And you meet challenges is like challenges rather than like, ah, oh, shit again, a, a, a dead end, you know, rather, or you're like, Oh, um, there's a way, you know, around this dead end and over that brick wall or whatever it is. So <laughs> down uh, that yellow you know, brick you road. <laughs> yeah, who knows, right? There's some munchkins there. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I don't know. I feel like I've phrased it a little messy, mm-hmm. but I hope it's coming across because I think that it's that it, if you pay attention to how you are in those moments, because if you're entering into a show or whatever it is, I was thinking of a music show, you know, thinking, oh God, no one's going to come and this sucks. And I, I suck at this. Okay. Yeah. You know, like there you are. So pay attention to those moments and like really try to change your attitude in every moment. If it's something you really love to do and really feel driven to do, then change that attitude and then see what starts to flow. Oh yeah. Starts to flow better. Totally. Changing Mm -hmm. your attitude changes the energy completely. Like Like your energy post. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, having gratitude for the little wins and that also helps to build up your inner resilience, which I think kind of circles back quite nicely to the confidence and your self-worth and, you know, building up momentum. Celebrate those little wins. Mm -hmm. There were three people there. There were two people at your thing, you know, Mm -hmm. rather than there's only two people like, Mm -hmm. yeah, right on, you know, celebrate it. Even if it doesn't feel like a win, go ahead and celebrate it as one. Who cares? They say your brain doesn't even know. They say your brain chemistry and all that doesn't even know the difference. So if you're celebrating it, then you're calling more of that celebration into yourself. Uh, There's, I don't know if you've read Beyond Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. Mm -mm. Oh my, I have so many readings I need to do. (laughs) Me too. I have a constant stack. It's, it's, it's it's nonstop, but that's good. You're feeling your brain. And, uh, that one was a bit of a slog too, to get through, but it's really rewarding and good. It took me like a year. Uh, I, I only read a little a day. Um, so anyway, though there, he's got some studies in there that people were practicing piano and they did studies where people were actually practicing piano Mm -hmm. and the other people were just practicing in their mind. And they just would like close their eyes and like really run through it and imagine their fingers on the keys and think through how it sounded and all that. And um, you know what, when they went to sit down in the piano at the piano, the people who had run through it in their mind were just as good as the people who hadn't and who had been just playing on a piano crazy. Mm. Like that's crazy. So just doing it in your mind, your mind, his point is that your mind doesn't know the difference. So if you're celebrating these wins, you're drawing them into yourself. Your, your mind doesn't know the difference between a fucking Tony Robbins crowd. And you know, the three people that you're two people that you've got in your meditation, if you're celebrating it in the same way, you're going to keep calling that energy in. Absolutely. I actually started doing this thing because um, over the last while, I guess I've started to step a little bit more into um, like an organizer or like teacher sort of role. So like I'll do little, little workshops and, you know, offer meditations and things like that. Um, I've actually got something coming up where I'm going to be doing opening ceremony for a music festival. 
and like, oh. I've got, yeah. And so I'm like excited, but also nervous because this is kind of outside of my comfort zone. But what I do is I kind of get myself into a, into a meditative like state and I play out how it's supposed to go. And like from my heart, I'm not like in my head. It's like, what's the flow of, of this thing? How, how is it going to land on people in the most effective way? And then see myself doing it because that way, then when I'm presented with, you know, the situation and I'm actually there living it, my mind has already gone through and built some confidence around how I'm going to stand, how I'm going to speak the energy that really, that's the most important part. What is the energy behind what you're doing? Like how, how do you want people to feel and focus on that? And that has given me so much confidence to do things that I would otherwise be just scared of shitless to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very effective visualization and it's, and it's proven to work. They've done lots of studies. They, them, I don't know. And, <laughs> um, but it is, it really truly is. And so many people do that and it is very effective. So no good for you. I do it too. I absolutely do it. And I've done it, you know, whoops, sorry, during performances too, like music or something. I remember really doing it in a detailed way once. And uh, afterward, people were like, I don't know what you did, but that was so good. And everybody loved it, you know, and I was like, okay, noted, you know, that if you take the time to actually do that, and that's the trick, sometimes we can get lazy about it, you know, mm -hmm. and you start to just coast or phone it in. And you actually have to stay diligent on top of it. And on top of those, um, those visualizations and they get easier with time, just like any other practice. But, mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, good for you. That's, that's super effective and smart and a great tool. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's what I, it's so funny. I feel like that's whenever somebody says something to me, that's like, you know, complimentary, I've gotten so used to just being like, Oh, thank you. But like not actually taking it in. So I'm trying to yeah. practice taking in when somebody actually says something kind and Good. generous. Thank you. I know that's, that's a practice too. Absolutely. Receive that. Isn't it so easy <laughs> to give in that way and so much more difficult to, to receive it? Yeah. And so many times we go, no, thank you. And you're like, no, 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 no. Just receive it. Just receive it. You know, <laughs> just say, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. So something I wanted to ask you before we wrap up, because okay. um, we're, our time is coming to a close uh -huh. here. Um, and this is something I have, I've actually, and it's for my own kind of, um, you know, I guess I'm taking a poll okay, <laughs> from, right. from all of my podcast guests. I've been okay, asking great. this a lot. That. Yeah. What, like with all of this, how important do you think the role of who you surround yourself with and community plays in your ability to, um, keep a positive mindset and to keep motivated and to keep going? Like how important do you think your tribe is in and how, who you surround yourself with? Um, I think it's quite important. Yeah, I, I do. I, I'm, I'm guessing too, a lot of your people agree with that. I, I, um, you know, they say you should look around at who you're hanging out with and that uh, can really show you a lot about yourself. And so, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had friends that are more negative or maybe, you know, just not showing up in ways for themselves even, or for their own lives. It just doesn't resonate with my heart. And so I have to find people that I can go deeper with. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. I've even, you know, moved out of um, the space of going out drinking and mm -hmm. things like that. They just, it just, that's not where fun lies for me anymore. So I've had to sort of go, well, what, what does, you know? And so it's, you know, getting out in nature, it's connecting, it's doing hot day together or something like that. And so, yeah, I really do believe that it completely matters and it's okay to be selective on where you spend your time and who you spend it with and to pay close attention to that because sometimes you outgrow people and you move in a different direction and that's okay. It is. It's, 
it's all right. And you can still be kind to those people, but it may not just be a fit anymore. I actually mm -hmm. have a friend who was telling me the other day that she has a very close friend that she's had for a very long time. And it's a big part of her friend group. And this friend was like, has hurt her in the past. And the friend said to her, you know what? That's just me. That's the way this is going to go. I'm going to hurt you. You know, you're going to get hurt. And I was like, no, no, that's not okay. And she goes, yeah, you're right. I don't feel like it's okay. And I was like, it's not okay. The, the right people aren't there to hurt you. And I think you should probably move away from this person. And so I actually saw her yesterday and she said, I'm really glad we had that conversation because I've had to cut her out. And it's been hard for me because I feel like I don't have any friends right now. And I was like, interesting. Well, how do you feel about that? She said, I don't know. She said, I think I'm just sort of having to accept that perhaps this is life just giving me a time of reflection within myself and to sit with myself for a while. And I was like, that's really beautiful. And that's going with that flow. Like maybe it's a time of introspection, you know, and we have ebbs and flows with everything in our life. So maybe you are going to have a time of introspection, value that value that time. Can you just say, cool. Uh, okay, fine. I'm just going to go out in nature and stare at the trees and see what happens and feel small compared to the universe for a bit. And then you'll have another ebb and flow. Another tide will come in and you'll have more of a social life. You'll have people flow into your life that teach you things, a new community opening up. I know with Fit for Service or um, just here in Austin, I have been surprised that my entire social life has kind of shifted even in the last year or two. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, what a trip, you know, and I still have my old friends, but so, you know, I've moved in a different direction and that is just okay. And you just have to sort of go, they're not going to get it sometimes and that's okay. And, you know, and, and choose where you're spending your time. And that's a good thing. That's a mm. really good thing. I love that. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm it, glad. Yeah. I love that. Um, because as I hear you sharing that, I am also at the same time, I'm thinking back to some of my own experiences over the last few years where, um, yeah, I think I've, I, you know, I've had these experiences with people in my life and I'm like, I don't think this is serving me. And maybe you go through a period where like I did, um, where I really felt like I don't have anyone around me here. Like, thank God for my podcast, but I felt like I don't really have anyone around me that is my tribe. Like I haven't found my people, but at the same time you go through that little period, but you're creating space to call in all of these amazing new people and friendships yes. into your life. Well said you are, you're creating space for whatever's new and you're showing mm -hmm. that you're open to it. You know, I had like a dating experience last fall and I just noticed that the guys I'd been dating were just naturally, I was losing interest to just with the way I was moving and growing in my own self-love. But there was one guy that was kind of hanging on and, and Justin had come along and uh, my, my partner now. And um, so, uh, someone said to me, I was like, well, I guess I probably need to let this guy go or whatever. And she was like, if you don't, the universe is going to not find that space for mm -hmm. someone new. It's going to think that you're not ready. You know? And I was like, oh, shit, good point. And so I cut him loose. And of course, things move forward with Justin. But it's the same with friends or it's the same with anything. Like, can you just sort of say, okay, fine. I'm open to it. Like what, what's it going to be? And maybe this is it for now. And once again, you're appreciating the moment you're in a space of love and flow in the moment and you're not living in the past or in the future and in anxiety or depression or any of those other rumination type of situations. And, and then guess what? It'll all flow. Cause that's <laughs> so what it true. does. <laughs> so true. Well, Amy Edwards, you are more lovely than your Instagram. I will oh. have, you know, <laughs> well, there's the goal right there. <laughs> Celebrate that one. You are a <laughs> wonderful human. <laughs> Thank you. You are too. I really enjoyed our conversation. You have so Me much too. wisdom. Good for you for starting a podcast and sharing your voice and your light and your unique perspective. Hell yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate that. And I know I've really enjoyed this conversation. Me too. Amy Edwards, will you be my friend? Yes, (laughs) we are friends now. It's official. (laughs) Yes. So where can people find you? Ah, the links. Yes. Yes. My podcast is the best place to connect with me these days. It's called the Amy Edwards show. And I am so excited about building that community too, and all leveling up in the best way and making our lives rock as much as we possibly can and overcoming fear to get to that best self. So that's what that's all about. And it's easy to find on any platform, the Amy Edwards show. If you want to check out a particular episode, I mentioned the one with Serena Dyer, Sony, I would highly recommend that one. It's fantastic. And she shares so much light since we mentioned Wayne Dyer too. Mm -hmm. So that might resonate with your audience. So I would just say, check that one out. I think it's episode, mm, shoot, I'm forgetting what number it is, but, um, but yes. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and I'm, I'm findable too on Instagram. If you want to check out that post, we referenced at real Amy Edwards. Amazing. Amy, yeah. you rock. This is awesome. You do too. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I'm honored to be here. So um, thank you. Thank you yes. so much. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> awesome.